Hello guys, Vic with Phone Arena here and early betas of the new style are already available for the Galaxy S9 series and the Note 9. Starting right with the lock screen, you will notice that the useful always on display feature is still here and it comes adorned with some special effects if you use the stock wallpapers. You have new customization options for what's displayed, but also you can now choose to have this option off and manually toggle it with a tap on the screen. This way you can save battery while still having a quick way to see whether you've missed an important notification or not. The first thing that pops at you after you start a phone updated to Samsung One UI is just how different everything looks. The icons default to a huge size and while they are still squircles, they are now flat with just one color and a contrasting white symbol in the middle. We can't say we like them too much, they look too simplistic to us, almost like some unfinished work by a design student, but your mileage may vary. You should be able to easily switch to different icons by accessing the themes menu, but additional options were not available in the beta. What we do like is that everything does feel a bit smoother. We have not run quantitative assessments to actually measure how much faster things run in milliseconds, but we can feel an improvement. One other major change is that in this latest beta, there is no app drawer by default. You can go into home settings and enable it, and while you're at it, you can also change the size of the icon grid to a more reasonable one. If you choose to live without an app drawer, a swipe down opens a universal search. We like this option, but we just wish it was faster as it often takes a few long seconds for even simpler searches to load up. We also noticed some slight changes to the edge screen feature, which is still here, but now you have a dedicated button that introduces a new way to switch between edge panels. Digging deeper in the menu and the settings, you see that everything has been redesigned to have this new flat look with rounded corners. It's everywhere, in first party apps like the weather application and internet browser, and even in the new recent multitasking cards. Speaking of multitasking, the update also brings a brand new way to get around the interface. Instead of using the default 3 button Android navigation, you can now choose to use new gestures. Just go into settings, then display, then navigation bar, and here under navigation type, you can now select to use full screen gestures. These are swipes up from the left, center and the right part of the screen, and you can customize which side does what, plus you can also cho choose to have little hints. The recent swipe is particularly interesting, it shows a horizontally scrolling list of cards with the latest apps. Here you can quickly switch between apps and search for apps, while tapping on the app icons shows additional options like the split screen view and the pop-up view. We found these gestures to work mostly as you'd expect and we got used to them without much effort, but they do feel a bit cramped and it might have been better if we had a gesture from the side rather than having all gestures start from the bottom. The other big change comes in the camera app which looks brand new. You can still quickly start the camera with a double click of the power key, which is one of our favorite shortcuts, but the interface has changed. It now all looks a lot like the camera of the iPhone. You have different modes listed in the bottom and you can swipe left and right to switch between them. A swipe up and down switches between the rear and front cameras. And we find this setup works better than before, as you can now properly frame a video before you start recording, which was a hassle with the older camera app. We also love the little tweaks and things like the position of items. For example, swipe down from the top twice and the screen brightness level moves to the bottom of the screen, within easy reach for your thumb. Very convenient. You can now also lock the home screen layout. We find this option useful for those who fiddle with their phone and can accidentally delete an app or move it, so we definitely appreciate having this on board. The new night mode is also really cool and it's impressive how quickly you can turn it on and off via a simple button in the notification shade. What it does is turn the white backgrounds in places like the settings and the browser to dark grey, which is much easier on the eyes at night. There is a ton of other little changes that we have noticed here and there, but those are not as major. Overall, we like a lot of what we see in this big big update 
And while not everything looks perfect, Samsung still has time to tweak things until it rolls the update to everyone, and we hope it fixes the shortcomings. And this rounds up our first look at the Android 9 Pie update with the new Samsung One UI for the Galaxy S9 series and the Note 9. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching, it really means a lot. Subscribe for more videos and I will talk to you in the next one.